At the beginning of the film, two siblings, Becky and Cal, are seen in a car. They were traveling somewhere when Becky's condition deteriorated on the way, forcing them to stop. There was a field of thick grass by their side, and Becky heard a small boy's voice in the tall grass. They were also hearing the sound of someone else on the other side, where that kid's mother was discouraging him from begging for aid, which Becky and Cal found strange. Now they both move into the tall grass, parking their automobile in front of the church in order to assist the child. Cal makes a long journey through the grass, while Becky stays behind to contact the cops. In this way, they had both lost their way, and as they stepped into the grass, supernatural events began to happen to them. They were phoning each other here because they couldn't find each other when they were looking for each other. When they believe the voice is coming from their immediate vicinity, they are separated by a large distance. They used to keep a small distance between them when they felt like they were calling each other from a far distance. Now, while chatting loudly, Becky gives Cal an idea, she advises that we both leap at the same time so that we can see each other. Now they both do the same thing and can see each other while jumping. However, when they jump again, they are unable to see each other. It terrifies them. While searching for each other in the dark, Becky comes across a man in the dense grass. It is unknown who is the father of the child shown at the beginning of the film, nevertheless, it is known that the child's name is Tobin. Becky explains herself to the man. How that youngster approached them for assistance, and they both enter the grassy area. Now that night has fallen, they both siblings have yet to locate one another. We should stay together, says the man named Ross to Becky. While sticking together, we can look for California Tobin, on the other hand, is Becky's brother. Do you know what Tobin was saying to Cal here? It's amazing how easy it is to catch dead things in a field of grass. Because the vegetation is incapable of penetrating the dead. However, Cal was uninterested in his story. And he says, completely disregarding his explanation, how did you get here? Now Tobin tells him, our family went to the church. Then they heard the voice of a guy crying for assistance from a grassy field. As they take a step into the grass, he says, we didn't get that man, and we all three got separated. With this, Tobin says to Cal, I know your sister Becky will die. Cal had felt odd after hearing it. Because Tobin hadn't yet seen Becky. Neither Cal nor her sister had told him about her. Cal inquires, how do you know this? Then Tobin reacts by saying, I was told this by a rock. And it's been shown to the rock by this grass. Which is the most knowledgeable. Tobin's entire story seemed pointless to Cal, so Tobin brings Cal to that rock. Cal has the option of touching the rock before this. Becky is the voice he hears. And, after being perplexed, he resumes his hunt for her. Meanwhile, another guy is seen approaching this grassy area. He was the husband of Becky, Travis, who had come here in search of Cal and Becky. First and foremost, he runs across Tobin here, who tells him, I know you're looking for Becky. He also informs him that Becky is no longer with him. He also walks him to the body of Becky, who is dead. Travis feels saddened by her death. And he continues to bemoan her loss while clutching her necklace. As the dawn approaches, Travis begins to struggle to emerge from the dense grass. But Travis was having problems getting out of the grassy field. Now Travis hears the sound of a child beyond the dense grass and he asks that kid for assistance. This kid's name was Tobin, and his entire family had waded into the grass to save Travis. However, they are unable to locate Travis here, and they are all divided from one another. Many days pass here, and the movie's first scene is depicted here. It indicates Becky and Cal have come to a halt here, and Tobin is requesting assistance, against Tobin's mother's prohibition. The plot of the film has become increasingly confusing. Let's have a look at what's going on. Actually, the entire plot of this film is based on a temporal cycle of repeating, and all of the characters are caught up in it. This time cycle is occurring while Tobin arrives at Travis' request, and Cal and Becky enter the grassy field at Tobin's request. Whereas, it was observed that Travis came here in quest of Becky in California, it means that the film is following an enigmatic time cycle that has been running for a long time. Let's pick up the movie where it left off, with Cal and Becky stepping into a field of tall grass. When they were both phoning each other, Travis could now hear their voices. And he tells them both to keep talking. 
As a result, the three of them meet at a location. Becky and Cal now inquire of Travis. What are you doing? Then Travis tells them both, you've been missed for the past two months. And I've come here to look for both of you. And this fact seems so strange to them. Because they'd only been here two days. And Becky and Cal felt it for this reason, because it was their second time cycle, which is still running in this film. But, despite the fact that the people in this film are likewise uninformed, this time cycle is a conundrum for everyone. They were all attempting to leave this spot at this point. At the same time, they are listening to the voice of someone who lives close to them. His name is Tobin. Travis forces him to sit on his shoulder in this position. Tobin tells them about a building so that he can guide them while viewing the area out of the thick grass field. And they begin strolling towards that structure. Becky receives a voice message on her cell phone at the same moment. In the message, someone said, don't let Cal hurt Travis. Also, don't let them do the same mistake over and over. This message looked enigmatic to the three of them. However, they begin to ignore this message and continue on their way. When they were about to emerge from it, tall grass had begun to swallow Becky. As a result, Becky loses consciousness there, and Cal and Travis rush over to help her. Meanwhile, Tobin's father comes up behind him. Who informs Becky, as she regains consciousness, I know how to get out of here. Simultaneously, Tobin informs his father that they have seen a building outside. And they are also heading into the building, as Tobin observes it while sitting on his father's shoulder, but he does not notice any building there. They all consented to come out with Ross after seeing it. Instead of taking them outdoors, Ross leads them to a rock and proceeds to convince them about the benefits of touching this rock. As Cal was about to touch that rock, Robin's mother approaches and warns him not to touch it. She claims that Ross has harmed her in this location. And he's seen Becky dead here. They don't agree with this lady since they believe she's gotten psychologically disturbed as a result of being here for so long. Meanwhile, Travis notices something is awry when Ross starts forcing them to touch the rock. And he starts hitting that dude. Despite the fact that Ross is overcome by Travis during their fight, Travis maintains his courage and urges others to help him get out of here. When everyone had consented to go as discussed with Tarvis, Ross crushes Tobin's mother's head. When they saw it, they all become scared and attempt to flee simultaneously, but they all failed to find an exit. They then come across a dog. They arrive at a forlorn store, which indicates that they have finally emerged from the thick grass area. When Travis and Cal were arguing in the store over something, they heard Ross outside. They rapidly moved to the store's rooftop, where they were looking for a route out of the tall grass. And they noticed that the only way out is to go through a field of tall grass. They also noticed that they were brought to this business by a dog. Now, this dog had reached over the grass, passing through the earth hole, and Travis had slid away from here after observing it. Once again, Cal comes to his rescue. Then he purposely lets go of his hand, causing Travis to fall down. This is something Tobin notices Cal doing. Before this, Tobin speaks to him or says something, and they hear Ross' voice again, and Cal takes both of them downstairs. After stepping downstairs, Tobin had stepped back into the dense grass. Cal and Becky had also walked to the tall grass area, and it was noted that all of these activities were being made in response to that mysterious message. Becky was the one who had received it. According to this communication, Cal had bruised Travis. And Tobin has done it again, stepping into the grass and making the same blunder. Cal and Becky had also entered the tall grass area, and now Ross has caught Cal in the grass. Cal had moved to the opposite side after being freed from Ross, and Ross had followed him there to catch him. And he was saying to Cal here, I'll catch you no matter which way you move across this grass field. He strangles him to death after that. Many dead bodies of Cal have now been discovered in the tall grass area. It means that in the movie shown time loop, Ross has killed him several times. When Becky was fleeing away from the grass guys, she described them as frightening whose bodies were clothed in the grass, and those grass men carried Becky to the same rock where Ross had taken them, lifting her. Becky was planning to give birth near this rock, where there is a hole. It's also clear that Becky had given birth to her child several times. Becky now dials her number from her cell phone, indicating that she will not return in the following time cycle. 
It means it was called by Becky herself, and she got it from an unknown individual. After phoning it, Becky had lost consciousness. As she regains her wits, she discovers her brother Cal near her. Who was cradling Becky's baby. Seeing it, she had lost her senses once more. After regaining her consciousness, she realizes that Cal is forcing her to eat something, and Cal tells Becky, he's forcing her to eat the grass. In reality, he was forcing her to consume her child. Simultaneously, that boy Cal gets transformed into Ross, and he was true Ross. Tobin and Travis appear afterwards. Tobin was warning Travis that my father will kill them over and over. The time loop began with Tobin and Travis at the start. Now Tobin and Travis arrive at the rock, where Ross begins to hit Travis viciously, as Tobin was telling him things according to the time cycle. And he was forcing his son to touch the rock, but Becky kills Ross from behind. And Travis unintentionally contacts the rock here, he had begun to feel funny after touching the rock, and Ross perished here. After contacting the boulder, Travis had learned all the grass's hidden paths. But a curse has fallen on him, and he is unable to leave this grass, so he hands over Becky's necklace to Tobin, who removes it. And after instructing him the direction of the grass field to go outdoors, he says to him, wait for Cal and Becky to come out of the tall grass field. And tell Becky the complete tale while giving her this necklace, telling her not to come into the field. In the final scene of the film, it is shown that the time loop is about to begin again. It means Cal and Becky were about to enter the grassy field when Tobin catches a glimpse of them from the church. And he tells them the whole truth. Now they both refuse to enter the field of tall grass after being persuaded by Tobin, and Travis died in the field of grass. The movie ends here. Thank you for watching.